Cause we are the Marine Corps. Cause we are the Marine Corps. The mighty, 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 mighty Marine Corps. The mighty, 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 mighty Marine Corps. We climb higher than Spider-Man. We climb higher than Spider-Man. Cause we are the Marine Corps. Cause we are the Marine Corps. The mighty, 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 mighty Marine Corps. The mighty, 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 mighty Marine Corps. Well, good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're at. We got uh, hopefully attendees and panelists from all over the country. Uh, I want to thank everyone for joining today. Um, this is the From Service to Scholar, uh, the culmination of a term long storytelling event. My name is Casey Carpenter and I ran that event for the term and I'm very excited to have the stories that hopefully everyone was able to see. If not, please check them out. When we finish this discussion, they're available at the event link. Um, I want to give you a little background to the program and then introduce you to our storytellers. And then we'll move on to take questions from the audience. Please, those of you in the audience, feel free to drop in the chat uh, where you're joining us from. Um, if you have any questions ahead of time, please feel free to, to be an active participant today. This is for you guys to engage with the storyteller. So I appreciate you being there. Um, so as I said, this is a term long event. The idea is to engage with undergraduate veterans and telling that story of how they went from military service to studying at Dartmouth College. In that we hope to build a small group, a community of veterans um, that are able to support each other throughout that experience as a non-traditional student and having the life experience they do coming into the college. Um, also by building that story, really trying to draw out those common themes and those motivations that led to military service as well as what they're studying here. And the idea that those motivations, those values can be carried forward into the future. And then the final objective is to have this event here in which we get to share those stories with the community, kind of take away that abstract label of what it means to be a veteran and, and give a personal touch to it. Um, so that's what we hoped to accomplish. That's what I hope to convey to the crowd and then uh, I couldn't be prouder and more excited than how open and honest everyone was with their story and just how the whole process went throughout this term. Um, so without further ado, I want to introduce you to our storytellers. We have Colton Carson, uh, veteran of the United States Marine Corps, Andres Avalos, veteran of the United States Army, Arthur Lynch, veteran of the United States Air Force, and we have Anthony Linkovich. Um, veteran of the United States Coast Guard. I also want to introduce Kate Sullivan. Kate is a Dartmouth alum and president of DUSA, which she'll tell you a little bit about here in a bit. Um, and she supported me throughout the program. Not with us is George Priest. Uh, George is a veteran of the United States Marine Corps. Unfortunately, he is in class. He hopes to pop in in a bit. Um, and he's also actually down in Columbia, so his internet might be in and out. So please bear with us. But uh, ahead of the event, I asked the panelists to think about what the process was like throughout the term, um, what it was like to build and then have to share that story. So I want you guys, you'll have a few minutes um, to go one by one and just explain what that was like, what you took out of it, kind of what your expectations were um, compared to what ended up taking place. And um, I'm gonna put you on the spot, but Arthur, I'm gonna have you kick us off, please. All right. So um, initially, I heard about this um, storytelling thing. I got an email about it. And I'm like, oh, you know what? I really wasn't that enthusiastic about it at first. I'm like, you know, I really, I'm going to have a huge workload. I really don't want this extra burden, you know, it doesn't sound that interesting, but I figured I'd go to the first meeting to check it out. And I went to the first meeting and I got to meet all these amazing vets in this group. And uh, we ended up telling our stories and um, it was nice to hear all the vet stories. They're all amazing. And then, you know, it, it helped me to actually reflect how I got to Dartmouth, you know, cause it's been a tumultuous journey and it was just really cool. And it helped me to pick out the really important events that led to me getting here. So it was a good reflection process and it was good all around hanging out with the vets. It, and it was actually a nice break from all the schoolwork on the side. So overall, 
It was an amazing process and I would do it all over again. Awesome, thanks, Arthur. Um, Colton, we're gonna go to you next. Hi, um, Colton Carlson. Um, I'm sitting here in White River Junction. Um, the storytelling group I, I attended in the spring before um, Casey had really set up an official uh, curriculum, I guess. And um, in the spring, we were mostly focused on just the kind of storytelling structure and how to tell a story and um, why tell stories. Um, and so um, I took the summer off and then came back in the fall. I saw that the event was back on for the fall with a little bit more structure. And um, uh, I've just had a very complex um, interwoven set of experiences uh, that I myself have been trying to make sense of for, for a number of years. Um, and when I think of my own story, I, I tend to get caught up in the details. And so the process during the fall for me was getting past all of the details that really kind of slowed the story and um, have, you know, been, been kind of a a barrier for me expressing my story to others because I do kind of dive into those details that are seemingly important to me um, and, um, you know, kind of neglect the, the outcome, I guess. So for me, the process was getting beyond the details and um, using my peers input. You know, we, we, we ran our stories um, in front of this panel that you see here, all of the other veteran students that were involved and they gave, we were allowed to kind of receive feedback and that really helped to um, craft a story that made sense to people who hadn't experienced it alongside you. So that was very important for me in this process. Awesome, thanks Colton. Uh, Anthony, we got you next. Thanks Casey. Um, and much like uh, Colton uh, mentioned, I kind of um, in the past when, when thinking about my story, telling my story, it's easy for me to get caught in the details. And um, when I heard about this, this program, I, I had heard good things about the, the spring program and, and how it went. And I knew people who were involved in it then. And um, I, just, I just recognized the value in, in being able to tell your story well. And so I thought I'd, you know, just check it out. And, and um, so I, I showed up and uh, really liked the program and got to meet everyone and, and really just felt very at ease. And I, I said, this is, this is gonna be a great program for me to be able to build and tell my story, but also at a place where I can do so in a, in a very comfortable place. So that's what really attracted me to the program. But, you know, knowing how to tell a story, when I am reading a book or watching a movie or, or listening and talking to someone, if someone is a good storyteller is someone who I want to hear more from. And so I recognized that, Hey, I need to get better at that myself. And, you know, what better way to do that than with a group of, of my uh, fellow veterans at Dartmouth, I think this would be great. And it, it has been an amazing program and really helped me to structure my story to figure out what's superfluous, what's maybe not needed and to focus on um, the really important parts, the parts that, that get people hooked or, or pivotal, um, and then just really help, helping me to understand my own um, journey um, as, as it is from the past and, and as it will be in the future. So it's been uh, just a, a wonderful program. Awesome, thanks, Anthony. Andres, we got you. Um, good morning or afternoon uh, to everyone. Um, I kind of had a lot of everybody's mentioned that they uh, that they learned how to tell their stories without getting caught up in the details. But I, I, I kind of had the opposite problem when I first started in this program because um, up until I started uh, the storytelling program, I had never um, told my story in its entirety. Like like literally sat down from beginning to end, just said my story out loud. So it was therapeutic almost because what what just to me seemed like a bunch of unfortunate random sequence of events i was finally able to put some kind of some order into them and to show that it's not random there is a common theme and the common theme is me and uh and i'd never and i'd never thought about it that way and i i'm great i am grateful to have had the opportunity to to give that to myself 
Awesome. Thanks so much, Andres. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to Kate for a little bit. Kate, if you could introduce how you became involved with the program, what your experience was like, and then also what you're doing with DUSA and the college. Sure. Thanks, Casey. Um, so my name is Kate. I'm actually class of 2013. Um, and I'm currently serving as the president of DUSA, which is the Dartmouth Uniformed Service Alumni. And um, through conversations with Ann Hudak, Dean of Student Veterans, um, that's how I got linked uh, with Casey. And um, I think, um, you know, military service doesn't always leave a ton of room for creative pursuits or, um, you know, extracurriculars as they, as you might say, but um, after joining the Marine Corps in 13 um, and then getting out, um, I was a creative writing major undergrad and, and pursuing writing now. And, and I think in, in talking with Casey and learning about um, his goals for this program um, and then just in, in reflection on how I saw the role of storytelling in, in my own service as a way to connect with my own Marines and a way to really, um, you know, find common ground and understanding with a large group of people from, you know, all over the country, in some cases, all over the world. Um, you know, that was really a, a common bond that we had was, was in stories just in general. So um, being extended the opportunity to, to be with this group, um, you know, student veterans at Dartmouth, which um, is of course um, near and dear to my heart. Um, it was it was really an awesome opportunity to be a part of, and I and um, I know that you know with this current group who who has um, done such a great job in in refining their stories and sharing them um, really with that bravery and vulnerability that Casey talked about. Um, I hope that um, if you you know if you've watched the videos and if if you haven't yet. Um, take a chance to do so, but that I think they really, you know, challenge, um, you know, the, the notion of what a veteran is and who a veteran can be. And, um, and I think they, they did that brilliantly. And I, and I hope it's an opportunity to really, um, you know, under, understand, you know, who these students are and, and where they're going. Thanks so much, Kate. Um, so, I'm going to speak a little bit to that. And then in the meantime, if anyone has any questions, please funnel them through the chat. Um, and then I will relay them to the panelists to, to answer if you have a question for me or Kate as well. But uh, I do want to speak to that part a little bit of kind of what, what I viewed as the third, third objective, which is this communal aspect of, of the veterans having that ability to share that story. Um, throughout the program, one of the things we talk about is what does it mean to be an effective listener? What does it mean to be a generous listener? because storytelling is a two-way relationship. Um, unfortunately, given the context of this year, ideally this would have been something that was held in person in which the storyteller has that relationship with the audience. Um, but we make, what, we make do with what we have and that's why we end up here on Zoom. But uh, to Kate's point, we have this, this opportunity by sharing with the community to take away that label of what is, what is a veteran, which often, if you don't have a personal connection, it's very abstract. Um, could be sensationalized if it's if it's shaped by Hollywood in some way and instead you get that personal story um, and, and again all of you guys that shared your story you did it with a lot of bravery you I see my role as creating a space in which you're willing to be vulnerable and often that takes place as soon as one person is willing to be vulnerable it kind of grants permission to everyone else um, in that case I would call out Arthur was the first one to kind of dive in and like, hey, I'm gonna lay it all out there for you guys. He was, I, I had never met Arthur before. We had our first event uh, or our first gathering. And I was like, hey, I just want you guys to, you know, give a little bit about yourself, kind of share that long version of your story. And I picked Arthur first. And God bless him, Arthur was willing to, I'm just gonna lay it all out there and share that story. And through that process, kind of granted permission to everyone else of like, I get to be honest uh, now too. So, um, as we wait for questions to come in, Arthur, could you speak a little bit to that? What was that experience of you were the first one to go? Did you have any trepidation? And, and how did you feel about like the reaction from the group as well? Uh, well, um, I actually, before I really come on, comment on that, a big part of what got me to Dartmouth was being honest. 
you know, because I don't know if um, a lot of the panel or the, a lot of the people in the audience have seen the video. But um, <clears throat> like before my issues or during my issues, I didn't, I wasn't honest with myself. And when I started being honest, good things started happening. You know, I was doing good in school and doing the right thing. And then I ultimately got in Dartmouth. So being part of this group, naturally, you know, I figured I'm with my fellow vets, first of all. And you usually have a deeper connection with your fellow vets. So that made me comfortable right away. But secondly, um, I wanted to be honest, you know, I want if you're going to do something, you just you you're all in. You don't excuse my language, you don't half ass it. You know, so you're all in, lay it all out. And then that way, you know, I knew if I laid it all out, I'd be able to perfect my story to the best it could be. So, yeah, um, that's pretty much and being thrown to the wolves right away by Casey. Yeah, um, that certainly helped as well. <laughs> Thanks, Arthur. Uh, we did have a question come in. Paul, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, Sunday. Um, it said, in a number of stories, family members were clearly instrumental figures in your journeys to Dartmouth. How are your families impacting your experiences now as students at Dartmouth? Um, so everyone, you can take a couple minutes. I'll start with Colton and then work my way around um, if you answer that. Yeah, thank you for the question, Paul. Um, my family is completely um, integrated into my Dartmouth experience. As I um, mentioned in my um, story, I, I'm married. I'm, I'm a father of two little boys, a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and I live in a small apartment in White River Junction off campus. And of course, the experience has been different since um, everything has been remote. I am attending completely remotely, so I don't, I don't attend um, anything on campus. Um, so my study is balanced with family time. Um, my wife works part-time and she's also pursuing a master's degree. She's an RN. Um, so it's a huge um, balancing act, I guess. And so for me, I've, I've not only learned a lot about where my priorities lie, I, um, I saw, I noticed time passing very rapidly the, my first two years at Dartmouth and my boys grew from infants into um, children that were running around talking and um, you know developing personalities and that um, struck me uh, very powerfully and so I've really had um, I've been thankful for the time at home since the lockdown um, you know as negative as the the cause has been the effect in my life has been um, positive for the most part, being able to spend more time with my family and uh, watch my boys grow up more intimately and um, they support me. I, um, you know, without, without that, uh, that the energy that they provide, I, I think that, um, you know, the just, they, 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 they in one, on one hand, they're a distraction, but for the most part, they, they drive me forward and it's been really a wonderful experience. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Colton. Anthony? Yeah, so I'm, I'm very fortunate in that my parents have always been uh, behind me and, and with, with no matter what my efforts were. So they've always loved and supported me um, and I knew they would do so whether it would be, you know, me joining the military in the first place, if I ended up doing manual labor, if I end up going to, to graduate school, you know, they were always gonna be behind me. So I'm, I'm just incredibly fortunate to have such great parents. Um, and, you know, just having their support and, and friends as well has been uh, something, you know, I can't, I can't speak to enough. Um, but it's also um, having the support of, of family. It's been great in that I kind of see, um, this as an opportunity myself just to, to kind of, um, you know, tell my, my family, like, hey, you know, there's so many opportunities out there. I was able to be fortunate enough to find uh, one uh, in, in being able to get to Dartmouth. Um, you know, there's, there's other great things you can do too. And, and so trying to 
just being that encouraging uh, example is, um, is something that um, I'm trying to reciprocate in, in, in thankfulness and gratefulness to my family and friends. Thanks, Anthony. Andres? We'll hop over to Arthur. Oh, you so, oh, you're good. All right. Oh, all right. Yeah, for you. Sorry about that. Um, my family is was instrumental in my in, in getting here to Dartmouth. If any of you have seen uh, my video, um, even now after the fact, I find that my friends and my family, the people closest to me, because I can if you're clo if you're a close enough friend to me, you are my family, and it makes me better to have them around. And what I mean by that is that uh, it, it, a lot of, uh, I have a, a wide array of, of friends with different interests. So what I found is that um, kind of a way to kind of make my classes just a, a look, because I found the online thing a little, um, not as engaging. So what I started to do was I kind of started to take my homework with me and I started to talk about my classes with my friends. I found whoever had the closest interest to the topic of the class and I go and I talk about it with them. And it's it's amazing that the, these last couple of weeks, the stuff that I've learned in my classes have made for some of the most engaging conversations I've ever had with my friends. Uh, the, the, the most, I my, my brother who, if you can believe it, has been my brother my entire life, but I don't think we've ever had as a, as bonding a conversation as we've ever had over, if, if you can believe it, uh, economics. We were learning about some case study and there was something that happened and you know I didn't know if it was right or wrong and I thought I asked him about it and, and, and the conversation went from there. So I am getting better every day because of Dartmouth and because of my friends and family. And I, I, I don't think I could do it without one or the other. Great, thanks, Andres. And Arthur? Yeah, um, <clears throat> my family has been very, very instrumental uh, when it came to uh, joining the military in the first place. My dad was very encouraging because uh, things kind of weren't going well for me at the time for college. So he initially got me in the military, which straightened me out for a little while. And then, um, you know, I got into my addiction issues. But when it comes to family and that lifestyle, um, no matter what you put them through, they, they're the ones that never bail on you when everyone else does. So um, that was very, they were very, as many times as my mom kicked me out, she was always calling me the next day to see how, how I was, you know? So um, they were very instrumental in sticking with me throughout the whole process as many times as it took me to recover eventually. And uh, yeah, so um, without them, I certainly would not be a Dartmouth right now. Awesome, thanks, Arthur. And to get to more of the questions, I'm gonna kind of one off. I'll pick one of you guys to answer one of the questions and then we'll we'll move on. But uh, I'll start again with Colton. Um, what advice would you give to veterans or service members who are considering pursuing higher education at Dartmouth or another institution? Um, my advice, well, I would, First, say that um, realizing that there are other people in your situation, or at least similar, you know, with uh, military background, are doing that, and um, that is a huge part of just knowing that it's possible. Because you know, some of us may have come from backgrounds where um, an education like this may have been in the cards, and we set it aside to join the military. For me, it wasn't. Um, just uh, economically and other other factors, um, so it knowing that it's possible was huge for me. And I, I see Chad Rary in the conversation, veterans like him who have um, done it before. I guess it's on us now to 
um, look back at veterans who are a few years behind us um, and maybe looking for their uh, um, opportunity to pursue education and to give them our experience. Um, and so I, I guess if for, the, for someone in their shoes looking forward, I would just say reach out um, to someone you, within a couple of degrees of separation, you can find somebody who is pursuing a uh, rigorous study and just reach out to them, let them, you know, ask them what their experience has been. And a lot of us have unique takes. We have a lot of commonalities, but, um, and I think in my, in my experience, um, if you are putting that in that energy out, you're going to cross paths with the right person who has that specific bit of, um, information that you can really use. Great, thanks, Colton. I'm gonna give this question to Andres and Arthur since you just did this transition, but um, what can faculty members, many of whom who have limited exposure to the military, um, what can they do to support you in your transition to Dartmouth life? So specifically via Zoom that you guys have just had this transition, can you speak to what that experience has been like and if there's anything professors can do to assist? We'll start with uh, you, Arthur. Um, that is a good question. Um, I, you know, cause, uh, that's a good question because a lot of vets that may be coming to the school, um, unlike a lot, majority of the school population here, uh, don't have that scholastic background, like coming right out of high school, maybe even out of community college. So um maybe if uh the prof if i had to come up with something maybe if the professors were notified somehow okay we got a couple of vets in the class um they could personally talk to them one-on-one -on -one and see what it is they can do to assist in the coursework and the course load because they might not be used to it and uh yeah um, if, if, if it's a one-on-one -on -one thing and they work with them closely, um, in the class, then I think that's one thing that they could do right away, right off the bat. Great. Thanks. And over to you, Andres. It's, it's difficult for me to answer it because I, I, I'm already very, it's just, impressed with uh, the quality of my professors. Uh, in fact, sometimes I almost I almost want to ask them, is there anything I can do to make it seem like I, I deserve to be here? Um, but I think that they're, it, I, I don't know how to answer the question because I think that they're already doing it. Every step of the way on my transition here, they, um, uh, I was given the opportunity to speak up if I needed any special accommodations or anything like that. So um, have an open ear, be willing to hear us out if we do need anything. Um, but, I, and, and, but I think you're, it's already, I think that's already being taken care of pretty well, personally. Awesome, thanks, Andres. I'll speak to that really quickly as, as far as, as the professor, you're the leader in the classroom. One of my favorites quotes is the leader brings the weather. Um, but that idea of are you creating a space in which you're listening in a way that the veterans are there to, if they have a story to share, if they have a background they want to give you. So just making yourself available and approachable in that way, and that veterans and any students are going to be comfortable sharing their story um, so that you're aware of the, if there are going to be any hiccups or anything like that. Veterans in particular and non-traditional students just because it is a, a unique experience. But uh, can I add something? Yeah, absolutely. Um, like I agree with Andre, you know, this school has far, far exceeded my expectations. The workload is just crazy hard, but um, yeah, um, I'm sure the professors would be there if we did need them. I haven't personally like reached out in that way, but they're, they're doing that anyway, just like Andre said. They're doing that anyway. This this school is absolutely amazing in so many different ways. Awesome. Thanks, Arthur. 
Um, so we got time for a couple more questions. Chad, I'm saving yours for the end because I have a vested interest in the answer to that question. Um, but I'm going to go to Anthony. Uh, Jennifer asks, what skill or skills that you learned in the military have you used as a student at Dartmouth and or what new skills have you had to learn? Um, yeah, and I think that's a great question. Thank you. Um, I would say that um, two of the skills, and I, I even use these a lot when I'm talking about like my resume or something, uh, but two of the skills I really think that have been the most valuable from the military are communication and then also having adaptability. Uh, adaptability, this will be for any service. Um, you have to be able to, to, to get, get ready and get moving at any time at the drop of a hat. You gotta, you gotta be physically, physically ready, mentally ready. You gotta be ready to, to go and, and, and leave, leave the house, leave the country, whatever it is that you have to do, you're trained to be ready. And so that transition, or that helps um, as you're transitioning to the civilian world as a student, uh, to be able to take on, as Arthur mentioned, a workload you're not used to, or, or being, having to write a long research paper you've never written before. Um, and so you have to adapt and overcome as, as well used as that phrase is, it, it really does apply very well. Um, in communication, um, I mean, from day one in boot camp, you know, you're sounding off as loud as you can, usually repeating back to your drill instructor or company commander, whatever, what have you, um, you know, what they're asking you and, and um, your title, their title. So having clear communication, that's how you successfully accomplish a mission. That's how you can make sure that you, you don't have hiccups, you don't have mess ups, uh, fatalities, whatever it may be. Um, it's necessary and it's absolutely essential to everything you're doing to be able to communicate the needs and wants of, of your team member and, and um, the higher ups and, and the people on the field. So, I mean, this is having that as a skill also translates to, hey, I'm not doing well here or, um, uh, you know, I am, I'm seeing this aspect, but I'm not understanding this. So reaching out to your peers or your professors um, whoever it may be for support, I think that is a form of communication that has been valuable to me in, in realizing that I need to, you know, make known what, what I'm not understanding or, or if someone else is in the lurch, you know, hey, I see you're struggling with this. I've been there. Let me help you out with this. Um, and, and so having that communication and that uh, adaptability have been uh, really important to me in my experience. I was still muted. Thanks, Anthony. Um, I'm going to really quickly, the anonymous attendee that submitted your question, I'm going to quickly address it um, before we move to the final question. But I'm going to put him on the spot because I know he's attending right now. Uh, as far as mentorship and sponsorship, here at Dartmouth College and through our program, we had the opportunity to talk to former President James Wright. Um, President Wright is a veteran himself. And in that conversation, he, he came and shared his story in one of our weekly meetings, which is an incredible story. If you haven't heard it, um, I encourage you to seek it out. But uh, in that, we also found out that he was integral and the motivator to getting put in place what's called the Yellow Ribbon Program. But the Yellow Ribbon Program, um, essentially the GI Bill pays for public university, private universities. If they cost more, the Yellow Ribbon Program was implemented in which it covers the rest of that tuition. That program was put in place by President Wright. And all of us in this panel discussion now owe our attendance to Dartmouth to that Yellow Ribbon Program. Um, and, and so we thank President Wright for that, who through that um, was a leader for us. And through our conversation, he encouraged us to continue to connect to veterans, be there for each other and lead and be mentors. So I think we all kind of took it upon us to, we want to be mentors. We also want to continue to seek out those relationships. Um, so I wanted to put him on the spot a little bit and just share that to address your question and then uh, move on finally to Chad's question to close out the program. But Chad asked, what is your greatest takeaway from the storytelling process? Um, so Andres, I'm gonna start with you and we'll work our way all the way around. Well, like I said in an, uh, in an earlier question, uh, that I had never before the storytelling uh, group 
even said my story out loud, out loud from beginning to finish to, to pretty much anybody. Anybody who knew the whole story, they knew because they were there. I never really told about it, even to, even to friends. And so I put it out there. And this morning, I woke up to an email um, from somebody I'd never met or talked to at Dartmouth that was just they thought my, my story was inspiring, which I was very flattered to hear. And that's definitely not something that I've ever stopped to think that I was or my story ever was. And the thought that my story means something to other people, I, uh, it's an honor and I'm, I'm truly flattered. And that's what I got from this. Thanks, Andres. And to embarrass you a little bit, I've got that same either text message or email about your story a handful of times as well. So I really appreciate how willing you were to share it. Um, Arthur, we'll move on to you. The greatest takeaway from this process. The greatest takeaway from this process for me was being able to pinpoint and reflect all the amazing moments that led to me getting accepted to Dartmouth because, you know, I knew it was a crazy journey. I knew it was crazy. And uh, I never really, re I've told the story before, but not work, working with a story coach is totally different. It really helps you to pick out these certain key, certain key things and even things you don't remember. And just the re whole reflection process was, it was exhilarating. And now I'm motivated more than ever. Just like Andre said, like I've been sending a video to people and just hearing their comments, like how inspiring it is. Um, it's, it makes me want to just inspire people to follow this similar path. Like you can do anything. So that's probably the biggest takeaway that I got from the storytelling group. Awesome. Thank you, Arthur. Uh, Kate, I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you the same question. Thanks, Casey. Um, I would say two things. One is, uh, you know, in reflecting on stories we tell ourselves or, or narratives in general, um, I think at least for me, sometimes I get wrapped up in, you know, all the things I didn't do or, or the failures or um, you know, those kind of things. And, and those are all part of our individual stories, whether, you know, whether we like it or not, that, that kind of um, builds to the, the aggregate narrative. And I think this experience really showed me the power of an authentic, true story. Um, working with each of um, the panelists here, um, you know, they were, they're inspiring, they're moving, and they're all true. And, and that's really powerful and, and I think extends to, you know, no matter what you're doing, that is a, a true thing that you can kind of take away. And then the second thing would just be community. Um, you know, our Friday sessions were absolutely the highlight of my week, being able to talk to everyone and come together, um, both as veterans and then as part of the Dartmouth community at large. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to to next term, hopefully, when we can do this again, because it, it really was the best part of my week. Awesome, thanks, Kate. Um, Anthony, over to you. So I think one of my main takeaways from this program has been uh, that it's when you're, you know, you're incredibly busy and you're doing a thousand things at Dartmouth, you can forget how uh, incredible and diverse um, the Dartmouth community is. So getting to know my fellow veterans has been truly a pleasure um, and just hearing their stories and being able to, to know more than, hey, you know, they served like I served, they had a uniform on like I did. Being able to know more, it's an intimacy that I really, really appreciate. Um, so I think that's been one of the things I've really loved. Uh, personally though, concerning my story, uh, this, this course has really helped me to get a rhythm and to, um, to be able to 
yeah, to, to kind of tell my story in a, in a way that, that I'm comfortable with and at a cadence I, I can, you know, I can really um, stick to and, and not get distracted from. So I think that's been just excellent. Awesome, thanks Anthony. Colton? Thanks Casey. Um, for me, this experience, it has, it's been, ex I've realized how complex we all are and I've, I've known that but you know hearing other people's stories and watching them pick through um kind of the 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 lines of convergence that brought them to where they are now um and watching those tr stories change and seeing your own story change um while still focusing on kind of the same common theme has been extremely interesting for me and it gave me an opportunity to sit down and um, I guess I've thought about my own story, but it gave me an opportunity to discuss it with my, my wife, Danae. Um, and, you know, she was able to help me pick through the components of the story that maybe didn't play into the ultimate outcome of becoming a Dartmouth student. And, um, it just, uh, really helped sort through all of the things that I thought were maybe more important than the other things, but you know, it, turned, it was just a really exciting process to um, really explore all of the components that add up to the story that brought me to Dartmouth. Awesome, thanks everyone. So we're, uh, we're about at 12.45, so we're gonna be wrapping up here. Um, I want to again, extend my thanks one to Kate directly of uh, your incredible amount of support through this and. I don't think we would have been able to do the program as well as we did if you didn't come on and join. So thank you very much. Um, a huge heartfelt thank you to you guys for being willing to share your story and especially. For those of you that don't know, um, it wasn't originally intended that we were gonna record these stories and share them. We didn't know exactly what the outcome was. I wanted to shape that with the participants and they volunteered the idea of let's record them and share them with the broader community. And I really appreciate that you guys were willing to do that and then we got to kind of share this process um, beyond the group itself. So I thank you guys for that. If anyone has any questions about the storytelling process and the work we're doing specifically with this program or others, you can email me. Um, I have an organization called Our Common Thread. And if you go to joinourcommonthread.com, um, you can check out my website there and you can email me at joinourcommonthread at gmail.com um, if you have any questions just about this process in general. Um, and I'll close it out. Thank you everyone for attendance and uh, happy Veterans Day to everyone. I hope you guys don't have too bad of a uh, workload today with school and everything. And uh, I look forward to seeing everyone soon.